Another rough weekend for the Orlando Magic, although that's the Utah Jazz and Phoenix Suns, maybe that's expected. But why the Orlando Magic's problems aren't about the elite opponents they played, but what they're doing. Let's talk about the Magic's mistakes, plus Jalen Suggs takes another step forward on today's Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is February 14th, 2022. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Happy post Super Bowl, everyone. My name is Philip Ross. I'm like I'm the expert insight editor over at Orlando Magic Daily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we'll talk about the mistakes the Orlando Magic are making that are costing them, especially against these elite teams that they are playing. We'll get to uh, some of the things that they're doing wrong and why some of it's Kind of natural, but we'll talk about how the Magic have to focus on what they can control to take their next step. Plus, Jalen Suggs takes a huge step forward in Sunday's loss, or Saturday's loss, excuse me, to the Phoenix Suns, what he's been doing and how he's been improving as well. We'll get to all that, plus a review of the box score from Saturday's game coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, we want to thank you for making Lockdown Magic part of your day every day. No matter when you listen to us, whether it's the first thing in the morning uh, you can go listen back and listen to our mega trade deadline pod uh, from Friday, whether it's at lunch, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, the Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. This, this season for the Orlando Magic is not about their opponent. I know that sounds weird. I know that that sounds counterintuitive. Um, but it's not about what the Phoenix Suns do or what the Utah Jazz do. Those are good teams. They're going to provide challenges to the Magic. But Orlando this season, you know, there might be some tweaks. There might be some changes. But Orlando is generally not game planning for opponents. You know, uh, and and that's that's a real broad general statement, but the Magic have made it clear this year that they are focused on themselves, that they are focused on what they do, they are focused on how they want to play, and honestly, they're going to play that way even if it makes sense to do something different for a win. If you want to call that tanking, go ahead, but... The Magic have made it very, very clear. They are about their development this year. They want to develop players. They want to uh, give guy, give their guys the best chance that they have uh, to improve, um, to get better, to build toward uh, a goal that's way off in the distance over there um, that we can't quite see yet. The Magic are playing as a team they want to be rather than the team that they have. Um, and generally, I think that's the right approach. Um, I think, you know, there's there's been plenty of people who've criticized Jamal Mosley for some of his rotation decisions. Um, I would look at the way the Magic are playing right now, especially with Mo Wagner out, um, that, you know, they're playing both their centers and both their point guards at the same time. And yeah, it shows. Again, if you want to call that tanking, if you want to call that dis- call that whatever, yes, the Magic have made decisions roster decisions, rotation decisions that aren't designed to help them win. Not today, at least. They're designed to help them grow and develop beyond this season. So I I think what's really important is, you know, the Magic aren't necessarily putting a matchup out there or or putting a lineup out there that matches up with the team that they're facing. They're, they're, They're playing really against themselves. And so in that sense, it's really important that Orlando has, you know, has guys who could play cleanly. You aren't going to make repeated mistakes. Now, as I've mentioned before, I, I don't think the Magic are making bad team mistakes anymore. Um, outside of the the blowout loss, you know, over the weekend, um, to Memphis and Boston, 
um, the Magic aren't making bad team mistakes. They aren't kind of ducking their head and 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 just you know kind of putting their tail between their legs. They're not playing with poor effort. Um, it, the mistakes they're making are not bad team mistakes. They're making a lot of young team mistakes. You know, maybe losing some focus here and there uh, in the course of a game. You know, trying to do a little too much. Um, feeling themselves a little bit with some heat checks or or, or whatnot. Um, turnovers are the big one. The Magic are a team that's still very, very young. And so mistakes are going to be part of the equation, especially now that the Magic are feeling a lot more comfortable and starting to play with a little bit more of a heightened pace, of, of an increased pace. The Magic are a, a top half, are top half in the league in pace for the season. I think they're 12th in the league in pace in possessions for 48 minutes. So they're getting up and down the floor a whole lot more than they have. In fact, I, I looked up the pace numbers for Saturday's uh, Magic Wands. Um, the Magic are have their are the highest ranked in pace they've been since 2018, and they haven't been higher than they are now. Again, 12th in the league since I think 2008 or 2007. Again, that's not to say the Magic haven't played haven't played with more possessions or less possessions, but relative to the league. The Magic have not played with this kind of pace in a long time, and I think that's something that's going to stay. But what's killed Orlando in these last two games against Phoenix and Utah were their own mistakes, were turnovers, especially early on in the game. The Jazz turn, the Jazz didn't convert a lot of points off turnovers, but the Jazz built a 22-7 lead in the first quarter, a lead that the Magic were trying to climb their way out of the entire time because of the mistakes the Magic made because of the turnovers, because the Magic were giving away possessions and giving them away for essentially free. And if they're giving them away in live ball situations, Utah is going to slam it down your throat. Phoenix is a team that likes to play fast too. Phoenix is a fast paced team as well. You turn the ball over, especially in a live ball situation, they're going to turn, they're going to throw it back in your face. So Orlando committing, I think it was, Eight, 15 or 16 turnovers against Utah, committing tw- uh, 15 turnovers for 23 points against Phoenix, that's a death knell. You aren't coming back from that. You are, uh, Unless you're an elite, elite, elite team, which the Magic are not, you're not coming back from that. And so Orlando has had this issue throughout the course of the season. Um, they have had this issue where they give away possessions, where they struggle with turnovers. They, they turn up, turn the ball over in bunches. They give up offensive rebounds. It's killer for this team. The Magic currently rank 26th in the league in turnover rate. They're around 15%. So 15% of their possessions end in a turnover. They had an 18% turnover rate in Friday's game when they turned the ball over 18 times. They've generally done well, though, to prevent points off turnovers. They're they're 19th in the league despite being so low, 26th. But again, you're playing a dangerous game. The Jazz got 24 points off turnovers. The Suns got 25. So turnovers are a big, big, big factor, as are offensive rebounds. Magic currently rank 18th in the league in the defensive rebound rate, and they're 25th in the league in second chance points allowed, which is a frustrating fact considering how focused the Magic often are at protecting the paint. They're actually one of the best teams at defending the paint, giving up the, giving up one of the fewer points per, points in the paint per game, especially for where they're ranked overall. But they struggle to finish possessions. And again, these are completely preventable. You know, rebounding is about positioning. It, it, yes, it has a little bit to do with how your defense is broken down, but it's about positioning. It's about want to, it's about effort. It's about going, going after and getting the, getting the ball. So Orlando is more than capable of fixing these problems. Now, a high-paced team, especially a young high-paced team, is going to make mistakes. Um, teams that typically run a lot of fast breaks, they turn the ball over a lot too. So it's not so surprising. And with a young group, you know, Cole Anthony's, you forget Cole Anthony's in the second year. Jalen Suggs is still a rookie, turns the ball over a lot. Um, Wendell Carter has had a lot of decision-making responsibility in the high post, especially he turns the ball over a fair amount, although not nearly as much as the guards. 
um, there's going to be those kinds of mistakes. And, and that and you can live with those mistakes. It's about bouncing back from them, obviously, and then learning how to reduce them. But you can already see how difficult it's going to be to win games consistently if this is how you play. If you're turning the ball over a lot, if you're making a lot of these mistakes. Now, again, if the ball, if you, if you have a, an aggressive pass, sputters out of bounds, that turnover is not the end of the world. It's the steals that lead to runouts. It's the 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 bat. It's the the turnovers that lead to fast breaks. It's the quick shots that lead to long rebounds and 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 runouts. Yes, the Magic are playing at a faster pace these days, but it's also still hard to say that they're the ones in control. That they're the ones dictating the tempo all the time, and that's really what pace should mean. Um, pace, obviously, in the statistical sense, means possession for forty eight minutes. The pace is a very, very amorphous term. And I and I do agree with Coach Mosley say the Magic are playing with better pace overall, but it's got to be under control. And that's really the issue. So this weekend against Phoenix in Utah, Orlando did some really good things. Orlando cut that 22-7 lead down to three and trailed by three at, at the at entering the fourth quarter before their defense just got eviscerated by pick and rolls, but before they kind of let go of the rope defensively and you know, a scared of the three point shooting that Utah has, which is a fair, fair thing to be afraid of. Orlando couldn't con- couldn't contain and control the paint. They they played very uncharacteristically in that game against Phoenix. Turnovers really killed them. Turnovers really hurt them. Allowed Phoenix to get out and transition. Orlando was unable to kind of control them and, and get things back under under control. And eventually, they were playing a, a very up tempo back and forth game that Orlando just does not have the firepower to play against a team as good as the Phoenix Suns. Orlando was outmatched this weekend. So I'm not reading too much into the results and into what happened to this team this weekend. Um, the Magic are going to lose to, to Utah and Phoenix if they're operating at full tilt, which they largely were. But Orlando also cannot make that worse by turning the ball over, by creating their own mistakes. And especially as we get closer and closer to the All Star break here uh, and a very favorable schedule toward the end of the season. If the Magic are trying to pick up wins, which debate that another day, if the Magic are trying to pick up wins at the end of the season, they got to clean up their house first. We'll talk a little bit about Jalen Suggs and the strides that he made this weekend coming up here in just a moment. But first, this is the time of year. I've pretty much given up on all my New Year's resolutions. I'm trying, guys. I really am. I wanted to work out. Instead, I decided to bring stuff in from my car. I had, you know, obviously some extra food from the Super Bowl party. It, it, it was not, it was not a good day. And, 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 and there's a lot of eating out going on this week too. So I'm a, I'm a little concerned for myself, but I'm going to try and get back on the horse, get back to my resolutions. I, yeah, I, yeah, I hit up, hit my bike a few times over the weekend, but keep planning on doing that. Keep making time for that too. And the best thing to do to help me supplement those workouts, help me stay on target is built bar. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, and you will enjoy eating it too. If you haven't tried their puffs, you're missing out one of the best tasting Built Bars. They're these fluffy, marshmallowy, protein infused marshmallows. They're not just a protein bar, they are just delightful. They're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate to make sure you get that chocolate taste. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors, including yummy cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, and they're going to be your new favorite too. All Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, so you get that chocolate fix. They're low-calorie, high-protein, and replace your candy bars with a much better, better for you, at least, chocolate bar. Go to Built.com and scroll down to the macro chart. You'll be blown away with the high-protein, low-calorie bars they have to offer. They're also high-fiber and low in carbs. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. They come in great flavors, mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, White chocolate cookies and cream. They're all delicious and new flavors are coming out all the time. If they are, think a flavor might be good, they'll make it and it'll be delicious too. At Built Bar, they are all about the taste. They make it t- taste delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. And I don't know how, but they pull it off every time. I can truly say that too. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thank you again for making Locked On Magic your first listen or part of your day every day. 
no matter when you when you listen to us, please listen to us. We truly appreciate you making us a part of the day. Now, for your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Let's talk a little bit about Jalen Suggs. Jalen Suggs, you know, I, I've been kind of saying this. Um, we've been waiting for sort of the breakthrough game for Jalen Suggs. And he's had a few pockets here and there where he's played, had one really good game. But I, th- I think we're still waiting for Jalen Suggs to take just kind of this, this not seismic leap, but a pretty fair leap. Um, you know, you look back at rookies and, and, and rookies similar to Suggs, um, who hit all-star levels. Um, and you do see a general pattern where they have these games or they have these stretches where they show off how talented they can be. Um, and, and I think if there is a concern about Jalen Suggs, and I'm not super concerned about, about Suggs, I think I think he's, A, his defense has been incredible for a rookie. Um, and B, I, I think he's still figuring out a lot of things and 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 being on this team in particular, um, he may not be best suited to, to showcase himself for. Um, but I think that, I, I think that we have yet to see Suggs kind of take that star leap. And, and I'll admit, uh, and maybe this is unfair, I, I've kind of lowered my ceiling a little bit on Suggs. Like, I don't think he's the star um, that we all probably thought he was on draft night. Now, I think he's still a very, very good player. I think he's still going to be a very high-level contributor for this team. Um, so I'm not giving up. I, I, I'm certainly not giving up on him by any means. But um, I think there's a, a lot longer to go with Jalen Suggs than I think maybe we all initially thought. So... Suggs is still figuring things out, obviously, and still kind of putting all the all the pieces together and 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 put and pushing forward. And so when he has a game like he had Saturday night in Phoenix, um, against uh, you know against Chris Paul, against a really good defensive team, you have to start take you have to take a little bit of notice, and you have to kind of say, okay, what did he do well in this game? Well. The one thing we know Jalen Suggs has done really well is get to the basket, especially since coming back from his injury. Suggs has been a more dynamic driver, a more successful finisher, um, just more efficient in every way. Um, And that was on full display Saturday night. He was cutting and knifing through Phoenix's defense. He scored 20 points, recorded his first double-double with 10 assists, um, shot shot better than 50% from the floor, so did it efficiently. Um, has, you know, he started to shy away from the three-pointers, not like not taking them, but he's not taking them as often. He's not settling anymore. He's getting to the basket. Um, and his body control, his ability to, to absorb contact, to create contact, um, has been really exciting to see. The Magic haven't had a guy like this for quite some time. Um, you know, just a guy who can just make a living in the paint off the dribble. Obviously, the jump shot's got to come around. The overall shooting numbers are still not great, but when you break down Suggs' numbers, especially since coming back from the injury, from the thumb injury, you see a, you see a guy who has made some serious, serious strides. Um, I'm pulling up his stats here. Um, Suggs has just been a whole lot better. When you look at just dry, just his, uh, his, his total numbers, so Suggs is averaging 12.4 points per game and five and a half assists per game while shooting a 44.7% effective field goal percentage since returning from injury. That's not so different from a season average, 12.4 points, 4.4 assists, but a 41.3% effective field goal percentage. So the shooting numbers have gotten better, but obviously not maybe to the level that everyone's hoping. But when you look at his driving numbers, his ability to get into the paint and toward the basket, you see a big difference. Entering Saturday's game this season, Suggs was averaging 4.6 points per game on 9.6 drives per game, according to Second Spectrum, shooting 39.1% on those shots. Since returning from a sub injury a month ago, Suggs is averaging 4.5 points per game on 9.5 drives per game. So same number of drives, same number of points, but shooting 44.8% from the floor on those shots. Again, maybe not the best percentages yet on drives. Inside 10 feet. His overall numbers reflect the improvement that we're seeing from him too. He's shooting 50% on his shots within 10 feet of the rim this season on 5.7 attempts per game. Since returning from injury, he's making 54.3% of his 6.3 attempts per game inside 10 feet near the rim. To me, again, to me, this says that Suggs is getting to the basket a lot more. He's putting a focus on getting to the rim and, and 
he is shooting more efficiently there. So it's all starting to come together. And now that we're seeing the assist numbers come up, now that we're starting to see him become a, a better passer, especially in transition where he is really effective. You get him out on the run. You know, we talked a little bit about pace early on. You get him out on the run. You get him out in the open floor. He's going to make good decisions. That's where he really thrives. So if the, ma- the Magic wants you to play fast pace because that's what fits their roster. Their roster wants to get out and move. Their roster wants to get out and run. And so obviously they got to get the stops to do that. They got to play better defense to do that. Um, but Orlando Orlando has a team that wants to get out and run and push the ball. And they have players who can attack and transition. That's where Jalen Suggs is really good. As Kobe Price and Orlando Sentinel noted, um, six or seven of Jalen Suggs' assists came in transition on Saturday. Again, Suggs has taken some major steps forward. His finishing at the rim, his field, his efficiency at the rim has improved dramatically over the last month. Um, he is scoring. He's having these big scoring games more often. He's being more selective and shooting a little bit better from beyond the arc, but not so great. He's still, I think, a sub-30% three-point shooter, so that's got to be a big part of his focus. Um, turnovers have been an issue for him as well. Some you expect as a rookie, some that are kind of lazy and are like, okay, you need to cut that. You need to cut that out. Um, but there's still a lot to believe in in Jalen Suggs. And he's had a rough year, maybe a rough year than a lot of us expected. Um, but he's starting to figure a lot of things out, starting to put the pieces together. And Saturday was a big put the pieces together kind of game. Saturday was a game where we saw just how dynamic Jalen Suggs can be. One last stat for you. In a game, the Magic lost by 27, 132 to 105. The Magic were minus five in Jalen Suggs' minutes on the floor. I just want I just want that to sink in. Uh, in a game where the Magic really struggled, Jalen Suggs was one of the few guys that helped the team. And he was minus four in the fourth quarter. So the Magic were down 22 through three quarters. Jalen Suggs was minus nine, the only starter with a single digit plus minus. And again, individual game plus minus doesn't mean a whole lot, but I still think that that says something about the effectiveness that Suggs brought to the game. We'll see how he responds. We want to see a solid stretch of these games coming up. Certainly, we got some home games on coming up after the All-Star break that will help with that. Um, some opponents that may also help with that. Uh, but we'll see uh, how Suggs continues to develop and how Suggs finishes this season. We'll go over that final box score from Saturday's game against the Phoenix Suns, see if we can learn anything from that coming up here in just a moment. But first, football might be over for this season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops, and that's always so much better. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land, betonline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right to the Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website today or use your mobile devices to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. The Orlando Magic of... Lose this weekend to the Utah Jazz and the Phoenix Suns. We'll break down the Suns game here as Orlando Falls 132-105. to 105. Um, This game was a, a struggle for Orlando. Look, Phoenix, Phoenix is really good. And, and like I said earlier, Phoenix is the kind of team that presses every mistake. And so, you know, Orlando turned the ball over 15 times. Phoenix scores 23 points off those turnovers. Orlando gives up seven offensive rebounds. Uh, the Suns have five second chance points, so did a good job there. The Suns get 68 points in the paint. It, it, the Magic just, on a back-to-back, not playing well defensively right now. This was go- a recipe for a blowout. But, I, 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 you know, the Magic stayed in the game for most of the first quarter. They gave up the lead, got down by 10. They made a little bit of a push um, to cut it down to uh, a single digits. Um, and then Devin Booker hit a, hit a couple big shots and a big three late in the second quarter. That extended the lead back out. Orlando got it down to eight in the third, and then the Suns pulled away from there, and the Magic just could not reel them back in. Um, Orlando shoots forty-two and a half percent from the floor. You're not going to win games like that, but games that way against the Suns team, even if you're getting to the line twenty-four times, which Orlando did very, very well. Jalen Suggs had eight of those free throw attempts, although he only made five. Suggs again, twenty points, seven for fourteen shooting, five for eight from the foul line, six rebounds, ten assists, three turnovers. Um, this is a really solid game. I thought he did a great job picking his spots. Great job driving to the basket. That's that's the thing that he is most known for at this point. 
Um, Cole Anthony, I think is, it feels like he's starting to come out of that shooting slump a little bit. 17 points, six for 14 shooting, three for six from deep. Um, just three assists again. Like I said, I, I like to usually look at the assist totals for Cole Anthony. Tell me how well he played. Um, you know, again, was able to get his scoring going. Only Really only Suggs and Anthony were, were scoring in this one uh, for long, long stretches, um, at least in the parts of the game where, where the game was close and, and the game was in the balance. Um, and, and Orlando just couldn't find anyone else to get going. And obviously, that forces kind of Cole to start forcing things and, and, and get things going. Wendell Carter, 14 points, 6 for 12 shooting, 11 rebounds for him. Franz Wagner got going late in the second half, 12 points, 5 for 9 shooting for him. Hopefully that gets him kind of back uh, aggressive and back playing at, at a higher level. Um, off the bench, Chumo Kiki with four, 15 points, 4 for 12 shooting, 4 for 10 from deep. He added 10 rebounds as well. Terrence Ross with 13 points for the Orlando Magic too. The Phoenix Suns led in scoring by Devin Booker with 26. He scored 14 of those 26 in the third quarter as Phoenix put the game firmly out of reach. Um, Chris Paul with 10 points, 15 assists. DeAndre Ayton with 17 points, 10 rebounds. Orlando just could not handle anyone on the interior. And of course, um, and of course, Suns turned the ball over only seven times. So very few opportunities for the Magic to run. If you're not going to get stops, you're not going to get turnovers. It's tough to play at a fast pace. Phoenix makes you play at a fast pace because that's how they play. Orlando was able to kind of get, I thought, get good pace offensively. They missed a lot of open shots. They missed some, their fair share of open shots. They turned the ball over too much. And, of course, that's that's always a huge issue when you're dealing with a, a high pace team, when you're dealing with a team that's playing at pace. There's not a lot to say about this game. There's not a lot to say about the Utah game. Just got beat by two better teams. Orlando wraps up this West Coast road trip tonight against the Denver Nuggets. That's a 9 p.m. tip-off. Um, for Unite Owls like me. Um, so we'll have a complete recap of that game on Locked on Magic. And then, of course, the Magic are home for almost the rest of the season. I think they play, um, including tonight, 18 of their ne- 18 of their final 24 games at home. So a lot of home games, a lot of time at the Amway Center coming up next. I probably have that number wrong. It might be 16 to 24, but a lot of games coming up at the Amway Center uh, to close the season. So again, like I warned everybody, Good chance the Magic are going to win some games here down the stretch. But say lovey. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find us on Twitter at Locked on Magic. Subscribe to the podcast at Apple Podcasts. If you're tuning in, Himmel, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the fun places to download podcasts to your podcast enabled listening device. You can find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. And of course, for the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. I want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. We'll recap tonight's game against the Denver Nuggets on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic. Now that you're done with us, go though. Make your second listen, Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by Boy Q, with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. That's gonna do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily, Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.